Hey everybody, I'm Mama Baird and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing something quite simple, just roasting a turkey. I'm trying to get some freezer space up because we got some meat birds that we're going to be harvesting relatively shortly. I thought I'd bring you along and show you what I do when I roast a turkey and how I utilize every single part of that turkey. Uh, so we're going to start out now just by putting some butter, some seasoning, and we're going to roast it in our electric roaster here. Now if you've never done anything with a turkey before, or if you've never roasted a turkey, all you want to do, I have already rinsed this off and patted it dry. You see how there's kind of like a little pocket there? You're going to put your hand in there. Just like that and get your hand underneath between the skin and the meat. You're just gonna kind of like put your hand in there and then flick your hand up and that'll give you a nice pocket. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna flavor some butter and we're gonna stick our butter in there. Okay, same thing. See how you can kind of just peel that open. You're gonna pull, you're gonna just break up this fat here. Break up that skin, get that separate from the meat. I'm gonna do that all for the breast and then you can get down here and get in the thighs as well. And here, just gonna break that up. It rips on you that's fine if you see any kind of feathers like this go ahead and flick those off oh my gosh a turkey has feathers I had no idea <laughs> oh there's another one Bloop. Yeah, just like that now let me wash my hands real quick and I'll show you what we do next have about one cup of salted butter here and some poultry seasoning. I'm just going to add this to my butter. This has got sage, rosemary, thyme, bay leaf, and then I'm going to add more salt. And then you're just going to mix all this up. Our two and a half hour timer went off, so we're gonna open this up and check on our bird and see how she looks. Okay, guys, so whenever you're taking the temperature of a turkey, you wanna stick your thermometer in the thickest part, which is the breast, right by the bone. So we're gonna put it in here, and the temp we're looking for is 165. This says 200, and then I'm also going to do the thigh just to make sure. That also says 200. All right, she's done. So we're gonna turn this off. And then I'm just gonna let her sit in here and cool for probably like 20 minutes or so, just let her rest. You now for this gravy, all I'm going to do is strain this. the juices. Then you can see all the fat layer will separate from the juices and then we can make our gravy once that cooled down a bit. Good morning everybody. It's been a couple of days. Funny how life gets ahead of you and it doesn't work out how you plan. Hmm. So we adapt. And a friend actually ended up giving me a turkey that they didn't want in their freezer anymore and they asked me if I would like it. I'm not one to turn down free food, especially a turkey. So I took it. Uh, 
I did want to get a turkey out of my freezer though, that's why I was cooking one. So I did not want to put the one that they gave me back in my freezer. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do two turkeys. What a problem to have, right? So I roasted both turkeys, I'm saving the meat, and now I'm gonna make bone broth. I figured this would be a good time to bring you guys along, because that's one of the things that you wanted to learn how to make. So bone broth is pretty easy. This is gonna be a turkey broth, obviously. I have, um, oh, here's all the juices from both turkeys. You can see this is from the first one, this is from the second one. Um, uh, some people add this to their broth to add more flavor to it. I have two carcasses here, so to me that's plenty of flavor. I am going to save this, get the fat off, and then I'm going to can the broth. This kind of broth is the stuff that I like to use for cooking my rice in, using this broth, and then the bone broth is what I use for like soups and stews and stuff. Got my Target bag here. I know if you guys have been here for a while, you've seen me use it. This is where I add all of my leftover onion skins. I've got some parsley sprigs in here. I got some lemon. Um, here's some asparagus. Let's check that rubber band out of there. I got some asparagus stems in here. So pretty much any kind of scraps that I would want. Here's some cilantro that will add flavor to my broth. I save it. And by using your scraps, that makes this broth almost completely free. I'm using a carcass that normally would have gotten thrown away. I'm using kitchen scraps that normally would have gotten thrown away. Oops. The cats are up in my grill this morning. What are you doing? Get out of here, I'm trying to make a video. Oh, if it's not kids under feet, it's cats. Okay. So we're using all the scraps we have. I also have a bag of frozen carrot peels. I'm gonna put that in there, get this out of my freezer. And then I also have some <laughs> freezer marked celery. I am not a celery fan, so it takes a bit for me to use this. And I'm gonna use this in my broth. I also have canned celery here, where if you don't have any frozen celery or any fresh celery, and you happen to have canned some celery, you can use this as well. garlic, center some garlic in here. Uh, I also like to put bell pepper in or seeds in here. Okay. So that looks pretty good on that one. And then I'm gonna add these carrots. Oh yeah, ever so gently. And then a little bit of celery. Break off a chunk here. Or two. Let's see if I can smack another one out. Okay, I have to I told you to go to bed. Okay, that's better. Oh, I feel better. Okay. All right, onion scraps, check. Celery, check. Carrots, check. Bones, check. Now we're gonna add a splash of apple cider vinegar. This really helps break down the bones so you're getting that like bone marrow and that cartilage. That's what you want to infuse in your broth that is so beneficial to your health. And everybody's like, oh my gosh, bone broth. That's why. So that was just a splash, probably a quarter of a cup. Put it in there. All right, let me grab a few more things from the kitchen. I'll be right back. All right, I grabbed bay leaves and peppercorns. And my coffee. Oh yeah, that's what we were missing. All right, so peppercorns, this is just to add flavor. Honestly, you could just do bones and water if you, that's what you wanted. All the extra stuff I'm adding is just for flavor. Hey, what the? Okay. So I'm gonna add a small size palm full. Um, it's probably about a tablespoon and a half. I am not going to add salt to this. I like to have a little add salt while I'm cooking because I don't know quite what I'm gonna use this broth for. And then I'm gonna do like four bay leaves. Bay leaves also add wonderful flavor. You add them to most stews. I add them when I'm cooking my rice, things like that. I added the vinegar. All that's left is some water. There we go. 
as you can see, I filled this up to the brim. Water is right here where the lid goes because I want a lot of broth, I'm not gonna lie. All right, so I'm gonna put my lid on this. With this particular roaster, you have to plug it in. Okay, we're going low and slow with this baby. So I'm going to 250 and we're gonna leave it here for two full days. Now the reason you want to go that long is because it takes time to really draw out all those nutrients from those bones. Some people just do overnight, some people do 24 hours, some people do three days. I like to do two days on my bone broth. So we're just going to sit here and I'm just going to baby it. I'm going to come in probably four times a day, stir it, check the water level. If some of it evaporates, I'm going to add more water because I want a lot of broth. I don't want condensed liquid. I want a lot of flavorful broth. So it's gonna sit here for two days, we're gonna check it, we're gonna see how it goes, and then we'll have our wonderful turkey broth. So until then, I'll be busy doing other stuff. Hopefully in two days, I'll have time to can it up. Hey, I got a bone to pick with you. Why are you watching my videos, not subscribed to my channel? <laughs> you better like this video, subscribe to my channel, and press that notification bell. You'll know every single time I post a new video, all right, let's get back to it. Hey everybody, so it's the next morning. This is after day one, 24 hours of it being in the crock pot. And I wanted to open it up and show you what we got. This has been 24 hours at 250. It's been like that the whole time. I did have the water all the way up to here. So it is evaporated down. I will probably add more water to this. Now some people just go for 24 hours. Let me show you something, here's a bone. So this is what we're trying to get all the nutrients out, right? So they say you can go until it snaps. This can't quite snap, but this is breaking off. Did you see that? That's coming off, whoo, that's hot. I wanna go until this bone can completely snap though, cause that's how you know that you've reached all the way in there and gotten as much out as possible. Fill this up with more water until it gets back up to you. We're gonna let this sit for another 24 hours. I'll check it this afternoon and then I'll check it before I go to bed. And then whatever I have in the morning, we are going to be canning up. I'll see you tomorrow morning where hopefully I'm looking just as fresh. With my little scrap bowl here, the only things I'm gonna be saving from here are the bones, because we're not quite done with these yet. I'm gonna show you one more thing that you can do with these to utilize this. But all these rest of these scraps and fat and everything, gonna go to my chickens. These little ones though just disintegrate which is great that means you got all the nutrients out of them that's what you want
This has only been sitting a couple of minutes and as you can see it does not take long for that fat to start separating. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to pull off this layer of fat before we can it up. Alright, while that broth is cooling down and we're waiting for that fat layer to come on top, I'm going to cut up some of the turkey that I had taken when it was cooked. This is just leftover turkey that I'm going to can up and I'm just going to kind of dice it up a little bit so it can fit better in the jars and then we'll add our broth and we'll can this up while we're at it. So then we have some fresh cooked turkey on our shelves. I went ahead and got this all diced up. I had a whole bowl full. I went ahead and do four quarts. I'm gonna be doing quarts today. So you just put it in your jar. So we're just gonna take a little bit out of the other jars and add it to this one to make it a little more even, no big deal. You don't have to be too particular about head sprays with your turkey because we're gonna be adding broth as well. So we'll get five quarts out of that one turkey plus a little bit of leg meat from a second one. With my broth here, I just scraped off all the fat. Now, as you can see, I did not scrape off all of it. There's still like this layer there which is okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to sit here for hours making sure you get every single drop of fat off. It'll be fine. Don't put yourself through that much stress. And another thing to note is that this is all room temperature. Like the broth, it's kind of, it's come down. It's probably in 90 degrees. And then my turkey, I got out of the fridge. It's been sitting out for probably about 30 minutes and I have it at room temperature. So as long as you start everything at room temperature, then you will be just fine. So my water in my canner, room temperature, you got it. So you can start from super hot, you can start from cold, or you can start from room temperature. As long as everything is at the same temperature when you start, you will be fine. All right, so I'm just ladling the broth in here, and that way we can have turkey in its own juices. And we can make this into pot pie, a soup, a chili, we could turn this, we could drain the broth and save it and turn this into turkey salad sandwiches, all kinds of stuff. The bubbler. In there. Get on any extra bubbles out, especially when it's just like loose meat like this. They can get stuck in there pretty easily, the bubbles. So just want to go around, debubble each one, and then add more broth or liquid as you need it. to canning the rest of my broth up. The good thing about only getting five quarts of meat is that I can add more quarts of broth in there and just process them all for the meat time. With all the broth that was left over, we got eight quarts and a smidgen. This is a really cool cork jar. It's a square too, you see this? It's one of the older ones versus the new rounder one. It's kind of cool. I also chose regular mouth jars on purpose because the wide rims, I can't seem to find those lids anywhere. Like, tell me in the comments below if that's the same thing with your guys's. 
I can find regular wide mouths, but I can't find wide. So I'm kind of thinking ahead and not using the wide mouth for something liquid if I don't need to. Then this way, it'll just pour out easily. I won't have to struggle about getting it out. And I have plenty of lids for it. So that's kind of my thought process on why I chose the jars that I did. I wonder what's inside of it. Um, just chocolate. keep it from falling to the ground. Seven quarts of broth are in this canner and then we got five quarts of turkey plus one quart of broth in this canner. The good thing about doing the broth is that I can can it for the same length as the meat time but then you wouldn't be able to can the meat times for the length of the broth time if that makes sense. So you can always put something in there for longer than it's required but it has to at least be in there for the minimum. So the broth, we are pressure canning for 25 minutes for quarts, and then we're gonna do 90 minutes for turkey. So I'm gonna get the lid on here. The heat's not even on yet because everything's at room temperature. So I'm gonna get the lid on. I'm gonna get the heat cranked up. As soon as this starts eventing for 10 minutes, I'm gonna put on the weight and we'll start our times. It's been over 24 hours. These have been sitting on my counter. I got them washed off. I have them labeled, just says turkey, and then the month in year that I made these. Our five, we got our five quarts, and then our broth, tea broth. Now, if you don't like the separation, like there's a little fat on top, I just kind of barely skimmed it. You can do more detailed on that if you'd like. A lot of people, they don't like this little bit in here too, so they will take a cheesecloth and strain it through a cheesecloth in addition to the mesh strainer to get this a nice clear broth. I mean, I just shake it up and then it mixes all together. So I'm not worried about that, but that is something you can do if you are. Now we have five quarts of turkey and seven quarts of broth. One of them did not seal, so I just put it in my fridge and I'm gonna be using it for some soup later. So we started off with two turkeys, roasted them, I got meat for dinner, I got five quarts of meat for my shelf, and then I got some homemade broth. Next, I'm gonna be taking those bones and using them for something as well. So stay tuned for that video coming up. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Mama Baird, and I'll catch you next time.